Hello and welcome to Bloomington Today. I'm Judy Sky Voss and this is the buzz for the week of August 8th through the 15th. A new exhibit is on display here at the Inez Greenberg Gallery. We'll meet the artist in a little bit, but first let's transition over to the Mall of America Transit Center for a special ceremony. The morning of August 2nd made for a cool summer day for a hot topic the groundbreaking ceremony for a project to overhaul the Mall of America Transit Station. It's about a 25 year old station that hasn't had a major renovation since light rail was introduced in 2004. This new station will improve efficiency, it will improve safety, it will be easier to get in and out of. This transit station will really be a front door to many people coming to visit Minnesota, uh, the region, Bloomington and the Mall of America. The Mall of America attracts an estimated 40 billion visitors each year, with 17 million of them using the transit station for their transportation. And about 1,000 Mall of America employees use this hub as well. The renovation of the Mall of America hub marks a key link in the build-out of the regional transit system. And it's really good to see that this is happening because it is continued investment and reinvestment into transit in our state, in our region. Funding for this renovation and other projects planned in the build-out come from a five-county partnership that began nine years ago, creating a funding source of over $1 billion. Make no mistake, uh, this renovation is more than just a facelift. Uh, when we look at this new front door to the Mall of America, it's going to be a lot different uh, come next fall. This is a really about efficiency, safety, and rider considerations. So when the new transit center is complete, both mall uh, and bus operations are going to have separate entrances and exits into the station. This allows everyone to efficiently come and go into what remains one of the most popular tourist destinations in the state. Millions of users have already come through the transit center and we're excited for millions more uh, over the coming years. Election day is just two months away, but voting is taking place as early as today. Bloomington Civic Plaza is the site for absentee voting, and here's what you need to know. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Any voter can come in prior to the election and, and vote by absentee ballot. If you are already a registered voter, you do not need to bring anything with you. If you think that you might not be registered, then you would need a form of identification and a document with your current address on it. And they fill out an application and then uh, with that information we look her up in the voter registration system, find out what precinct they normally vote out of and issue that ballot to them. We secure it in a couple different envelopes, and then it gets sent to Hennepin County to be counted. Our hours daily are 8 to 4.30. Our election is August 14th, Tuesday, so Monday the 13th would be the last day you could absentee vote. Get out and vote, it's important. It was 1993 when the city of Bloomington became a sister city with the city of Izumi in Japan. And according to one local official, the bond is still going strong. This is our 25 year anniversary. And so the city of Izumi, Japan, has invited a delegation from the city of Bloomington to come over to Izumi and visit them and celebrate our partnership. Well, right now we're trying to find out whether or not there's interest on the part of enough people to form a delegation to go over to Izumi to accept their invitation. We're looking for 10 individuals who might want to travel to Izumi November 23rd through the 30th. So that's the day after Thanksgiving. The costs are all uh, the costs of the person going. Basically their plane trip costs and their hotel fare. I would say it's $3,000 and under. It's probably more in the $2,800 range except for when you go there, all of the fees and the meals and things of that nature are picked up by Azumi City. And believe me, you are wined and dined when you go. You are treated like royalty. And since it is a mayor's delegation, you're treated with uh, very, very special privileges and you get access to things that someone who goes on a normal kind of tourist trip would never ever see or experience. Fifteen years ago, I was fortunate to actually go on a delegation myself. It's a very honest country, very safe, and so I had no worries about travel. But I can tell you the people are the same, generous, very kind, and really want to welcome you and make sure that you have a great time. There will be an application process and we'll go through that. 
They can call me directly at City Hall, 952-563-8735, or my email is L Pearson, and it's P-E-A-R-S-O-N, at bloomingtonmin.gov. 25 years of Sister City Friendship deserves a celebration, and so too does 60 years of an event that gets folks all fired up. July 19th marked the start of the 60th annual Verge Elrich Memorial Fireman's Slow Pitch Softball Tournament. The festivities kicked off with an all-star game on Thursday and wrapped up Sunday afternoon with final tournament play. 170 teams competed across six divisions. Along with game time, there was plenty of time to socialize and take in pre- and post-game activities, including a game between Bloomington Police and Fire, dubbed the Guns and Hoses game by tournament director Jeff Barnes. Barnes has been coordinating the tournament for over 30 years. He estimates around 20,000 visitors to this year's three-day tournament. His biggest challenge, he says, is pairing up the teams for equal talent in each tier. A big event like this needs big help. Barnes counts 17 local groups, including kids from Kennedy High School's choir program, among the many that pitch in to keep the slow pitch tournament running smoothly. All funds raised by the tournament go back to the groups that help out. Another win-win event is in the books for the 2018 tournament. And here's a summary of this year's winners. And that's the buzz for Bloomington Today for the week of August 8th through the 14th. If you would like to watch other stories from the show, go to this week's playlist. There you'll find a nationally recognized local artist whose work is currently on display inside the Inez Greenberg Gallery. And we bring you another look at a Bloomington Today series featuring some personal stories of local residents. Thanks for watching.